In this video, we're going to talk about coercions, which is a feature of type systems that appears in many languages, and we'll be looking specifically at how coercions are done in Java. Java allows primitive types to be coerced in certain contexts, and coerced means converted from one type to another. So here's an example. Let's take the expression 1 plus 2.0, and the difficulty with this expression is that the, the 1 here is, a, is an integer, and the, and the 2.0 is a floating point number. And there is no way uh, to add an int to a float directly. We either have to convert uh, the integer to a float, and then do the add as floating point numbers, or convert the floating point number to an integer, and then do the addition as integer addition. So they have to be converted to a common representation uh, before we can actually do the operation. And the normal thing to do, and the thing that Java does, is to convert the integer uh, to the floating point number 1.0. Now, a coercion, uh, the right way, I think, to think of coercion is that they're really just primitive functions that the compiler inserts for you. So it's like you left out a function call, and the compiler notices that and puts it in. So in this particular example, what would be the function call? Well, there, we can think of there being a primitive function that converts integers to floating point numbers in the obvious way. And so really, this expression here gets converted to the expression int to float applied to the number 1 plus 2.0. All right? So coercions uh, are probably best thought of as a convenience for you, the programmer, to let you avoid having to write some function calls. All right, so where it is obvious that a type conversion is going on, uh, the compiler can insert the function that performs that type conversion for you. And most languages really have extensive coercions. So the coercions are very, very common, particularly uh, between numeric types. And so this is not uh, just Java. This is really um, many different programming languages of all styles uh, have lots of different kinds of coercions. Now, Java in particular distinguishes two kinds of coercions and casts. You have widening coercions, and these will always succeed. All right, so that means that Java will always put them in, and there'll never be any complaining from the compiler or the runtime system about them, and, and we already saw one of those. So the conversion from int to float is an example of a widening cast. Now, narrowing casts may fail if the data can't be converted uh, to the desired type. So in particular, uh, float to int, well, this will work fine. Something like 2.0 can be converted in an obvious way to 2. Um, but if you're converting something that doesn't have an integer representation, something, say, like 2.5, you know, there's a question of what we should do here. Okay? And for such narrowing casts where there isn't a, a clear mapping, whether we should go, you know, whether we should truncate here or round up or whatever, uh, then Java will actually uh, complain and uh, not uh, let you do it. Okay. Um, uh, you know, a perhaps better example of the kind of narrowing cast that, uh, that Java will um, complain about is something like a downcast. So if I have um, uh, two classes, A and B, and B is a subtype of A, and then I have something of type A, well, I can cast it to a B. I can say, let's say I have X, which is of type A. Okay, and then I can have an expression where I try to convert X to a B object. So here I have a cast. I've indicated that I want to treat this expression X as a B object. And this will type check. Okay, so the, the compiler will let this through since B is a subtype of A. Uh, but at runtime, it's actually going to check whether X is actually a B object. And if it's not, you're going to get an exception. So this can fail at runtime if the object that X actually holds at the point of the cast is not a B object. All right? So the rule in Java is that narrowing cast can, must be explicit. You have to actually put the function in yourself. You have to put in the, the type cast your, uh, in the code so that it's obvious that you really want to do it. Uh, but widening casts and coercions uh, can be implicit. So it's all right. Uh, if you're widening, if you're either promoting to a supertype or you're converting uh, between integer types where it's clear that the that one type embeds in the other, uh, then those can be filled in for you by the compiler. Now here's a little Java trivia question. So it turns out that there is one type in Java for which there are no coercions or casts defined. Okay, so there are no uh, implicit uh, conversions or even explicit conversions. Uh, from that type to any other type? And 
The answer to the question, which is the only one, is bool. Okay, so only the type boolean has no coercions or casts to another type. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of coercions. I think that it's clearly a convenience for programmers. It's clearly something that is widely accepted as being necessary in programming languages because uh, um, casts, implicit casts and conversions are so ubiquitous. But I do think that it tends to lead to programs uh, that have uh, behavior that's different from what the programmer probably expected. And here's a good example uh, from the language PL1, which we call stood for Programming Language 1, was designed by IBM in the 1960s, and had many, many features in it. We've talked about PL1 a few times uh, in this class. And one thing that PL1 had was very extensive uh, casts and coercions, and this could lead to some surprising behavior. So here's an example. Uh, we have uh, uh, A, B, and C are strings of three characters, so it's important to know here that the length three is part of the type. So B is a uh, string one, two, three, C is a string four, five, six, and then A is going to be B plus C. And the question is, what is A? And, uh, and you probably won't guess, so let me show you what I think uh, is the right answer. So uh, first of all, the question is, what happens with this plus operation here? Well, so that is going to be interpreted as an integer plus. So uh, B and C are both going to be cast uh, to integers, and the, that this will be done uh, as an integer arithmetic. So, so B will get converted to the number 1, 2, 3. C will get converted to the number 4, 5, 6. Okay, and then we'll add them and we'll get out the number 5, 7, 9. Okay, so the result of this expression is 5, 7, 9, but A is also a string of three characters, so this has to be cast back to a string. Now, it turns out that this cast happens in two steps. First, this uh, this uh, number here is cast to a string of the default length, okay, and the default length happens to be um, 6. So this is cast to a string, it uh, looks like this, there's three blanks, followed by 5, 7, 9. And then uh, it's, that string of 6 characters is converted to a string of 3 characters, and we just take the first 3 characters, and so we get out that. And so the answer is that this program stores a string of three blanks in A, which is probably not what was expected. 